Hello everyone, I am Candice, the happy musician, and welcome to the Happy Musician Black Ass, where happy musicians come to talk. So today my guest is Christopher Marshall, an amazing musician, composer, arranger, um, and he's composed for orchestra, uh, you're a percussionist, you have, let's see, you compose for harp and strings and orchestra and percussion. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, and you can read his bio uh, on the website when the vlogcast is posted, so I won't leave anything out. But Chris, thank you so much for being my guest today. I really appreciate it. Welcome. Thanks for having me. No, what a great surprise. Well, I'm not surprised, but uh, I know we've been talking about this for a while, so it's so nice that we get to hook up, you know, like in the, the way the 2020, 2021 happens via Zoom, isn't it? That's how we do it. That's how, the world how we do it. <laughs> seeing everything there. But no, it's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here. So what have you been up to? I know before we started, you were, you're you're working on two different time zones regularly. What 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 is up? <laughs> so so obviously, I mean, like as everybody, you know, this this whole amount of craziness has happened, descended on the world, and we have to we have to think about things in a different way. So the the normal uh, whatever normal used to be for us, which was always pretty crazy, which you know our performing schedule that all stopped. Um, and you know, like most musicians, so that was tough, but you know what, you just fall back onto what you know. So, um, I've been teaching, um, so I teach piano, I pe teach drums and percussion, and I've been teaching composition and music theory. So, all of those things I've been doing over, over Skype and, and Zoom, um, both here in the UK but also in America. So, that's really great. We have, um, uh, some really good links in, in the US, and like, apart from yourself, um, in Virginia as well, in Greenspring uh, Academy. So I've been doing that. I've also been writing a lot. So my compositions actually had a new sort of project start with a, um, a holiday type of resort, really. It's one of these places, like 300 acres, lots of lodges. Wow. Um, and and they, 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 it's based in Wales, where, where we live. And they they create these most amazing seasons, and and the people when they go to stay there, they they're just totally absorbed by this whole thing. So my first thing they got me to write was Christmas Land. <laughs> so there I am in August, thinking about Christmas, and um, so and I got to write basically the equivalent of a musical film score um, for Christmas for the park. So there was all of these different parts. And so I, I think I ended up for the season writing near a, an hour and a half worth of music for full orchestra, um, lots wow. of harp. Um, and it was great fun and they, they loved it. And they've actually now taken me on as a sort of composer in residence. So I'm, I'm doing their seasons throughout the year. So I, I completed their winter lights, which is the sort of January through to halfway through March. Sort oh wow! Of, uh, sort of thing, but it's things like creating music for a light show and fireworks, and um, there's like a trail through a forest which has lots of installations, but lots of music, which is um, all, all all me, which is great. You know, it's it's a real escapism. That's the best way I can describe it because I just get to be in this amazing world and create these schools and forget about all of the all of the other madness going on <laughs> in the world. So. So that's been that's been great. It's been keeping me keeping me busy and keeping me sane. And you know, in comparison, a lot of a lot of other musician friends, because um, I'm sure your your viewers will will read about in my biography that um, I work quite a lot in the West End in London on some of the shows, the theatre shows, playing percussion and stuff. And I love it. It's such a family environment there. And and man, like all of those guys who are on the shows, they you know. It's all stopped, all stopped, no theatre going on. So so I know some of those have had a really tough time. So I, I feel quite blessed that I've been able to keep busy and keep happy. And um, we live in a lovely part of the world. So I have lots of greenery around us so I can go for lots of walks. And I think one of the biggest okay. things though is being able to be be family. It I lots of family. Right that greenery. <laughs> I really wish I had, I, I, I have not been to Wales, I have. I had planned uh, a trip, but uh, that will be postponed for a while. Um, but yes, that was one of the things that drew me. It's beautiful. Um, so, yeah, it does help keep your sanity here. Um, I definitely escape here to walking and where's the park? I have to get to the park. I have to get to the park. It's my, you know, it's just the only way to keep. But it's so good to hear that you 
you know, you, you pivoted or not, you know, you've leaned, it's a new craziness, it's a new normal. So you went from running around and doing everything, now you're doing everything, but just within your own space. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I'm so. saving a lot of fuel. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> uh, I, think I filled up my gas tank like once in the past like six weeks. Wow. It's, it's amazing, isn't it, where you go from, so, so my regular thing, I, I had to go to London every week from where we live, so that's about a four hour drive um, from where we are in Wales, so, and, and you know, <laughs> it stopped. <laughs> yeah, well, save miles in the car, save gas, <laughs> you know, oh, think of the bonus. planet. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Better. Yeah, the, I can definitely, the, it's crazy, Um. so I don't live to, I live about 40 minutes outside of, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania here. And um, usually on the way in, you could kind of start to see the the, the smog <laughs> and, you know, the clouds sitting there. And I drove up, my, my family still lives in Philadelphia and I drove in and I was like, oh, where's the cloud? I haven't seen the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, there's lots of things to be thankful for from that point of view, isn't there? So, yeah. yeah it's great. I mean, it's at a horrible, horrible price but um of course yeah at the same time it's just like well you it, it's a completely world-changing thing i think everyone has realized how to work differently and it, it's just it's been a long time coming but it just we just got forced to do it like at yeah I, I agree i think lots of things have been accelerated different ways of working um and but i think as well like we, we get so stuck in our ways don't we we just constantly yeah. roll along that's the way we've done it and you need something like this just to go right listen we, we wipe the slate clean now this is and you just say i can do this i can work from there i don't need to be going there and i and i think it's good it really is as you said as we come out to this we'll never sort of really go back the way the way we work before, you know. I don't expect that we will ever. I mean, and yeah, it's, it, we're creatures of habits and you, like, you know, sometimes you just, you need something to, you know, literally knock you off your block to say, hey, yeah, so this habit you had was, uh, <laughs> it was okay a long time ago, but now it's time to switch gears <laughs> and evolve and, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and we don't like change, but it's necessary, it's necessary. So. Perfect. But um, I'm I'm happy to hear, and I did catch your the uh, a piece or a little tidbit of your um, composition for the light show, and it is beautiful music. Oh, thank you. Thank so you. Um, I think I still have the link saved, so I I'll, I'll post the link to oh, that. Oh, great! Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it was really beautiful music. So, um, all right. So I have some questions. Right. Uh, for you, I, I feel like I could talk to you all day, but I won't do that because we're both really busy. <laughs> um, so the first couple of questions are pretty easy. So, you know, first question, what are you currently uh, reading? Do you have your nose in a book if you have time to read? Yeah, um, I sort of got in, because yeah, I used to do a lot of driving before this. I, I got into um, audio books a lot, you know, because it's it's framed upon to drive and, and read. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, man, yeah, I, I did those a lot. And so, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm terrible. I find something I like and then I have to read everything by that like author. So there's like um, all of the Tom Clancy novels, which I'd never read, like with um, Jack Bryan and stuff, which were, were great because there's some great adaptations now on Netflix and stuff of, of some of those books. So I went back and I've read the whole lot and there's a whole new series now like based around his son. And so I know I must be up to about 30, 35 of those books um, <laughs> in, in, in terms of like that's like a fictional novel. But um, other things I'm reading, I mean, like as a composer, I'm, I'm, I'm always studying. So like I've, I've always got my nose in a score. I, re I read scores like I read books. I, I'm, I'm straight, like, say, yes. <laughs> like, this is so cool. Um, but, but another book, funny enough, I've only just got it this week and it was in, um, introduced to me by, um, by a friend and it's called The Wim Hof Method. And it's this guy um, who is, he's like a survival guy, but he's really looked at basically the importance, I know it sounds funny, the importance of oxygen <laughs> in your body, but like that we don't breathe enough. We basically need to really do some strong work on breathing. 
Um, and he's got all of these methods like, you know, where you hold your breath and then you let it out over a certain amount of time and you can build it up. So the reason why I was looking for, I'm quite into my fitness and, um, and things like this. So it, he's got a whole method that you can do before your workout um, and like really like load up your body with oxygen. And, and there's like studies in there where he got like a group of people that surely just by doing this breathing method every day. And, and there's this cold shower bit, with it, which is not as enjoyable. The breathing <laughs> bit is quite chilling, but, the, <laughs> but the, um, the, yeah, the cold shower is like, oh. But, um, but it's, it's amazing that he got a whole group of people just by doing the breathing thing to build their immune system to such a level where they could like, they could deal with quite, you know, like with infections in the body, which would put people in hospital with no drugs, like literally just by breathing properly because you'll get you're you're optimizing your system our bodies are amazing pieces of kit but they optimize your system so that you can fight off things better naturally so um i'm, I'm sort of i've just started that book i'm really like sort of blown away and i'm hoping that's going to make a, a big difference in my life so um, um that's blowing me away and i haven't i've never even heard of this i mean i i I'm into yoga and I just start, I do the deep breathing yoga and yeah. I noticed a huge difference. I feel great. I love it, but it's nothing near to the level of what you're talking about. Um, yeah. I'll definitely be posting this book. Another one to add to my, my yeah, no. reading list. <laughs> it's getting quite long. Um, <laughs> I read, I I'm bad. Like I'm, I'm the same way. Like I read like, I, Oh, this Arthur's great. I have to read everything by, yeah. This Arthur and I, I'm a book addict. Um, I start reading and I have to be very careful and make sure that I actually continue to live my actual life because I can live in a book. I cannot eat, not drink, not move. I can lock myself away with a book. It's really unhealthy, but um, <laughs> and it's done. <laughs> I, it, as I said, just because things have changed, like with traveling, even if I was on a train or but I'm always reading and like the book, the, the car time was just a way of like, if it was on a, an audio book, I could still listen. listen. Um, but like when you're like, when I'm working on the shows in London, I'm in and out on the tube and stuff. I love putting my headphones on, blocking out the world and, and, and reading my book. Um, so yeah, that was a big thing. I'm doing less of that. So it, I find it harder to get the time to, yeah. It like just because the days are filling up and you're at home so you know that's your natural space so um so yeah i'm still i'm still doing it though but it's uh yeah it's a like this, this one's this one's a good one be you know the uh it, like the the novels the fiction stuff like it's so they grip you so much you're like i just need to read another chapter and <laughs> like the breathing one you're like it's okay i can walk away from this and come back to tomorrow right. like this is a different vibe but yeah right. that, that's the, so idea. the informational stuff you need to digest it a little bit more it's like okay I, let me just ponder on this let me digest it wrap my head around this this is pretty good stuff and then the fictional stuff it's oh it's you know it's kind of like tv in a way but you're not watching tv it's you yeah. know you're it's exciting and it's yeah i just need to know what's gonna happen next yeah. it's you know, and they and they're written that way purposely, obviously. But I'm that way with fiction. I think um, my my husband, but he's like, "Are you? Did you did you already read that book?" <laughs> oh yeah, uh, it was so good. He's like, "It's like really big. Like, how did you do?" <laughs> I'm like, I couldn't put it down. I had to read it. I said, "But now I have to go catch up on all the things that I didn't catch up on." <laughs> There you go. There's always always a trade-off, isn't there? There's it? a trade-off. There's a cause. I was like, yeah, I finished the book, but I didn't finish everything else I was supposed to. So, you know, I was like, ah, I was supposed to practice an hour ago. Ah. So, <laughs> but um, I'm going to definitely list that book. I'm going to have to invest in that. Um, my next question to you is, uh, and this is such an evil, horrible question to ask anyone in music, but I do ask it anyway. Um, what is your favorite piece or pieces uh, to play? To play? Um, it's really interesting because obviously a lot of what um, you know I play at the moment I'm practicing. Um, uh, I, it, it sounds it's sort of quite uh, ego based, but uh, just because of it that you. So for those of you who don't know, I'd like um, you're going to be blessed with hearing um, my wife, who I know is also going to be a guest on this this series soon. Um, who's a harpist. So we have a percussion and harp duet. So most of the things we're practicing to play um, are based on there. Now, as you can imagine, there's not a huge amount of repertoire for harp and percussion. Um, yes. so, so that's my other hat of being a composer. I get to write for it. So, so we've, been, we've been looking, I've got some, some nice new pieces 
cooking away and I'm enjoying, I'm really like, I've gone from the moment, I've sort of finished the composition process, but what happens, I finish the dots, we print it out and then we just get in the rehearsal room together and then we like workshop it again together. Right, yeah. And just, you know, and Claire goes, this is great. I think I want to put a bit more in there or should we thin this out? And I'm, I'm trying out different percussion instruments and find out what will work right. Um, so I'm really enjoying that process. And, and I, I've written this Spanish piece. Um, and, it, you know, it, I shouldn't say it because I probably jinx it. But like, you know, it really feels like it's going to be it's a good one. It's it, it feels like whenever I write music, I, I'm terrible. I write music for me. If I'm happy, by it, that's that's my my benchmark. You know, if someone else enjoys it as well, that's an added bonus. But uh, but um, so I'm enjoying I'm enjoying that. Um, and at the moment, I don't know you, you you know yourself as a musician that you just have some maintenance practice as well to do. So sometimes you just play in and um, so like you know on the marimba I'll get out some bark or something like this or or like you know some some of those type of things yeah. on the drums just to keep the hands going because I'm teaching um, drum kits as well across online and That's I've got some great pupils who are doing different things and one of them said to me anyway can we learn Rosanna by Toto I was like yes not a problem you don't even have to ask we're going to <laughs> the back catalogue we're going to learn it all so and I find myself like finishing the lesson and I'm like I'll put all of Toto 4 on the album and just play along with it just because I can, like just because I want to. And I'm just, so that's exciting, you know, sort of revisiting some of those stuff. So yeah, quite a mixture. Some of my stuff, some more traditional things and study-based things, which are going to keep the hands moving. And then just stuff for fun. And like like we, we have to remind <laughs> ourselves to have fun, don't we? Yeah. That our instruments, so. yeah. You have to have fun. You have to enjoy it. And I mean, what's the point? I, you know, that's why I, I sometimes when I'm, well, once upon a time before COVID, uh, when I was playing with other musicians, it was really interesting. I I would, I'd like look at someone like, how can you be so miserable? Like we're playing music, like we are making inanimate objects like make awesome sounds. And yeah. They're miserable. I'm like, how? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, have fun, enjoy it. Like you, you're, I don't know, some people that's, you know, which is why part of the reason Happy Music kind of came about. I was like, ah, this, I don't want to, I don't want to be that way. So. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, I get to be a musician, you know, not, yeah. I get to practice. So anyway, yeah. um, okay. So here's, I'm getting a little deeper. What two people have been the most influential to you and why? Okay, so um, I, I sort of see this on a couple of different levels. So there's there's people who've had massive effects on my life, like in terms of progression um, and inspiration. One of them um, was probably the guy who, who taught me um, when I was in music college. So I went to Trinity College of Music in London. And uh, the guy, his name was Kevin Nutty. And he was the principal percussionist. Uh, he was a percussionist in BBC Symphony Orchestra and English National Ballet. Um, and along the time, like he played for Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, he played on that album and stuff like this. And, but he didn't just teach me about percussion. Like he was my percussion teacher and we're like, we go and play the drum and we're going to do all of these things. But he taught me about life and music, like, you know, and he got me inspired in music as a general. Um, and, you know, it's coming up 20 years since I left music college and we still speak almost weekly um and you know and, and we still can just have like these massive conversations really deep i tell him about the projects i'm working on i always go to him for advice and so he's been really like massive um you know from that from for me personally but i think also as well the people i haven't met like you know people you listen to like probably um sorry about that um is it like david foster you know, like, you know, so David Foster, especially for me, like from the writing point of view, I mean, like um, I've been lucky enough to be a producer on a couple of albums that I've done just mainly because I was so heavily involved in either the writing or the arranging of the album. They said, can you be the producer on it? I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just because I, I knew how it needed to sound. Um, and, you know, like you watch his story, there's a great Netflix documentary about him at the moment it's, it, it's unbelievable it's like I've watched it so many times already like you know like it's just it's magic but um 
but what he's done and i just love the fact he's he created his own world like he's got his own sound like you know you listen yeah. to a record and you straight away and just go david foster's written like either written that or that string writing that's david foster or the production on it you just get that's got david foster stamped all over it um and i just i love i just, you know lots of us as musicians we're inspired by the same thing i'm very inspired by people who are like who have excelled in what they do it doesn't have to be with music so like we were like claire and i were watching in the start of the lockdown some things on like amazon and there was a documentary about andy murray the tennis player um about him getting his his hip like it was called resurfaced but it like gave you a snapshot of his life and we were both like really inspired by it to go and practice our instruments you're like but you just watched a tennis documentary <laughs> it's not that it's like it, it's watching somebody be the best at what they are what they do like you know and i think that's really inspiring and you um and you find yourself gravitating towards the same type of people who just dedicate their life and sacrifice things because that's where they want to be and they set their goals so you know hi so um so yeah um two people i think yeah kevin and and maybe david foster probably probably had, I mean, there's lots more but um i think well, yeah. from the two different camps, you know like you know so um I think I think yeah they were they were great great influences on me so great influence. awesome yeah musicians always have I mean you can you can always fill up an auditorium with the amount of people that have been influential um, it's it's just it's just a part of being a musician but I always yeah. like to ask that question and see where it where it takes people so thank you for answering. Um, okay. Now this one, yeah, this one, this one is a little bit more gentle. So, uh, what's one thing you do to um, keep happiness in your in your art, so to speak? Okay, interesting. Well, so, like, I don't know. A few years after I left music college, um, and I would started playing regularly in the West End and things like this. Um, which was which was amazing. You know, my first ever show was We Will Rock You. I played on that for six years, you know, and used to, like Brian May used to come in and play the show with us and take us to the pub afterwards and stuff. And I was like, like, like I'm, <laughs> I'm sat in a pub with Brian May and like, you know, and I've just played, a sh like, I've just played a show to 2000 people. And then another, in a couple of hours, another 2000 people are gonna come in and watch the same show. Um, and I get paid for this <laughs> and I'm like, this is so cool. <laughs> Um, but funny enough, the, as that progressed and I met Claire and we started doing, and as you'll find out from like her profile and the amazing things, she, like the, the circle she was already working in, we flipped everything around and I was, I sort of changed from one of the, um, sort of like musicians who are, you know, waiting, they just go from gig to gig, the phone goes, can you go here? Can you play this? I was doing sessions and stuff, that's cool. But we started creating our own work like we like you know as i said we put together our duet we'd start putting our own shows on we'd start putting our own tours together we start doing our own albums and then go touring them and and before we knew it the like sort of like the waiting for the phone to go to go and do a gig was it wasn't happening in the same way we were just we'd have lots of office meetings become a lot more business i suppose based but because of that like if, if there's something you don't like in your life, like to do with your career, it's your fault because you like, we now control, like, you know, we do everything we do. And, you know, there's, there's always ups and downs, you know, we're, we're missing playing at the moment, I'm missing being on stage and missing seeing friends yeah. and, and performing, but also as well, I'm creating and I know, you know, we're, we're lucky in that point. And I can't, I'm really, really excited that when this is over, I'm going to get to share all of the stuff we've been working on, like whilst in, whilst locked down. <laughs> exactly. So I think that I, I think one of those, like as a as a starting point for keeping happy, is you know just I I, th I think this goes for anybody in any job in any circumstances that if you're not happy about something, do something about it. you know nobody's telling you to stay unhappy. Like you, we all have the power and the control, um, and. You know, remember, you know, without using too many cliches, that nothing is done in your comfort zone. Like to make a change happen, you've got to do, so, you've got to break out of what we don't. And we, you know, we were talking at the start that lots of people knew things needed to change and things were like, and it took something massive to knock you out. 
and we've like lots of people have suffered like we've all found it difficult it's been outside of our comfort zone but change has happened and that's where change happens and you you've got to embrace that and go for things 100% and you know sometimes things will work sometimes they won't but you know you'll get so much more happiness from knowing you tried rather than sitting there and just accepting I'm not happy where I am or and someone said did you do anything about it well no well, right. <laughs> you know yeah, it's, it's so, um, I completely agree, obviously, 100%. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I will tell people, I tell people over and over again, and they're like, oh, you're, you're so lovely to work with, and this is great, and you're thriving, and it's wonderful. And I said, well, I can do that now, but I said, I was the complete opposite person that I am now. I said, I wasn't one of those miserable, unhappy musicians. I tried to avoid it, but I just lost my way, and I, I ended up there, but... I realized that, well, I'm responsible. I'm the only one that can make this change. I'm the only one that can change my mindset, change my approach and just change the direction. I, the wheel is in front of me and I'm the only one. <laughs> so, and it did work. It was, and it's really interesting because when, you know, the day came that I actually made that decision that this is not the type of musician I want to be, it was like, Somebody took a load of bricks, pushed them off my shoulders, and I felt hey. so much more freedom to actually think clear, think more clearly, act more clearly, make a plan. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden, you know, it was just like a big cloud got, you know, pushed yeah. out of my head. So you're absolutely right. I mean, it's. And I, I think even better from that, that, you know, you made that decision and you start this, this new approach to you being a musician and the way you are. A, as you said, people notice it like big time, but more important, you can inspire so many more people. Those people who are just thinking, I don't think I should be like this. See someone who's made that decision. Like I'm not going to be stuck down in the negative thoughts, the, the like, you know, the, the all, all of these, you know, the horrible, you know, comments and stuff like this. I'm going to stand above that. I'm going to be, I'm going to shine. I'm going to, I'm going to be sunshine. I'm going to be the happiness of people. People go, I'm going to be like that. And you inspire people to come along with you. And the more people who take that decision, we can, we can flip it. We, we, we can, we can make that difference. You know, it's not easy, but it takes people to, to make that first step. You know, not everybody else bold enough to make that first step, but you know, someone yeah. like yourself. And, no, it's uh, not, it's scary. Yeah. I was scared, but I was, <laughs> I was more like inclined to, like you said, just try and do and just, and you know, you, you know, I reached out to people that were, that I thought I wanted to be like, you know, and the musicians who, who to me were successful, seemed to be thriving, seemed to be happy, seemed to really have a standard that they stuck to. I said, I want to be like that. And I'm kind of lost how to do that. <laughs> I remember talking to my parents saying, well, what do I have? My mom's like, you know, you, maybe you should just literally write a letter, just if you can find a phone number, if you can find an email, reach out, ask them. The worst thing that can happen is they don't respond and you move on to someone else and get information. And it's surprising. Almost every single person I reached out to was not, not only responded, but was happy to share. He's like, I've never had anybody ask me these questions, these types of questions. You know, you weren't trying to get a record deal from me. You weren't trying, you, you just, you just yeah. were trying to figure out how to be a better musician. Give me your contact book. Give me all your gigs. Can I get me? <laughs> Whoa. You know, I wasn't sending you into my recording. Hey, listen to this. Get me on your. I just, I just yeah. wanted. I was just trying to find my way, and I just needed. I just needed some people to say, "Go that way. Try this." And and um, you know, thank goodness I had parents that were just like, "Why, why don't, why don't you literally just try a practical approach and see what happens?" So yeah. it makes a big difference. Now, this is my last question, and um, I love this question because it's never answered the same way. Um, but what does a growth mindset mean to you? Okay, growth mindset. Um, I mean, like for for me personally, as I said, we. It's it's funny that I find this thing a little bit like a double edged sword, just because it's the part of me that has pushed me forward all my life. It's the part of me that's made me do things that I never thought that I would do and achieve goals. Um, but in the strange way as well, it's, there's a slight negative on, on it in the fact that it's, I forget sometimes to enjoy what I'm doing now. 
and and sort of like just just immerse myself just say I did that like you know like I wrote that album it did all right in the charts and wow and just just take it in because often when that's happened I'm already on to the next project and I'm already trying to grow and do this and do this and do this and do this you know I'll go back to my my thing that nothing is ever done in your comfort zone so you you always have to push so that's the, the growth mentality um sort of comes from there but I'm I for for me I always try and relate it back to personal standards um the everything that say I write as a composer the next piece I always try and write better you know what can I do better how do I be the best of myself don't settle um and I think that it's it's really interesting that um I got to chat to like amazingly like a one of one of my heroes as well before before Christmas um rang me up like really random series events that I was teaching someone whose PA was married to one of my heroes and he just went I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up and all of a sudden the phone goes one day and there's this guy called Lorne Balfe now if you don't know Lorne Balfe is uh, so he's a film composer it, he writes lots of TV stuff for here but like he wrote the fourth Mission Impossible film Penguins in Madagascar you know, oh. you know, like um, worked with Hans Zimmer and stuff like this. And all of a sudden he's on my phone and I'm like, you know, trying to be cool. You're like, hi, hi, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you know, hey, cool. um, and, and he was, he, he did a, he, he mentioned, he said a really cool thing to me and he just like, you know, have real set standards for yourself. Don't let anything go out. You might be doing a friend a favor like no money like it's it's just a total labor and love but you're helping them out or you're doing a feature length film he said i treat everything exactly the same he said because if i'm going to put my name to it people see it and they do it and that's how you grow like because you have a standard um and he said so some things are going to end up costing you more investment into them but he said but what you're investing in is you and exactly. your brand and everything that people will never see you at a bad you know, like a, a negative. And I think you can apply the same to yourself as you're playing. You might be playing a background gig um, somewhere and you're like, oh, it's a background gig, nobody's listening. I don't need to be on my A game. I'm just like, you never know who's listening. And why would you do that to yourself? You've, you've practiced all of those years, be the best you can be. Because if you be the best you can be, your only good things will happen. Like nothing negative is gonna come from you being good. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's where we're at, and that's how you grow. It's the moment you start settling and you say, you know what, that's okay. I don't mind. Oh, that's that was good. That's that's good enough. The moment you start doing like that, you've dropped your standards, and uh, there's no growth there. There's no room for growth there because it's a negative, it's a negative thought process. So that's what I'd say for for a growth mentality. Be the best you can, set yourself standards and, and adhere to them. Like hold yourself accountable for them. Yes. And then you use them as stepping stones because if that's the bare minimum, well, you can always go up from it. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And this is okay. you just said what I preach. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you pretty much like that when I I just had a I just had a discussion with um a fellow musician who is uh well, she's she's a very good musician. She's looking to leave uh, corporate and go full time musician at a time like this. It's kind of crazy, but um, I'm like, you know. But she's like, but this person here and that person there and this. I'm like, why are you worry about them? I'm like, it's it's you have to you have to wake up in the morning every morning and say, okay, I'm going to be better than the person I was yesterday. And that's just that's I said if you do that you're 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 doing the right right thing and before you know it you'll you you won't be concerned and you about those people i said if anything you might want to say oh, i want to work with those people or i admire those people but they shouldn't be a threat to you you know no. um so and she was like oh my gosh i can't i don't know why i i said don't you feel better she's like i do because i felt so much pressure that i had to compete with these people and i'm just like like nah it's it's really wasted energy it's just, <laughs> it's just and it goes back you know when you said earlier like that moment you decided to be the positive person the happy musician that and you felt like these bricks were lifted and i was the same when i had that moment where i wasn't trying to compare myself to anybody else where i was realizing those people who were in that negative world who would always 
make the snidey comment or like wouldn't be nice to you or like wouldn't it and you just go well when you take them out like you know who are they who like what have they got in like you know i'm just gonna do my thing and do it and like all of a sudden i started doing that and then funny enough you know what those same people are still where they are 20 years ago um and you know the other the other part like as, as i said earlier i'm into my my fitness and the thing i do every year he's he's one of your guys he's from philly he's like sean t do you know sean t no, so, I don't. So, so Sean T, like, he's like fitness guy, and he's got like he he made insanity. If you've ever heard of that, okay, like, now I do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, and uh, and he's like he's a great motivational speaker, and, and like, and his like sort of tagline is transform and believe. But like you know, all of his workouts, he's just like, don't try and beat me, don't try and beat that person in the back, don't go faster than them just do better than you did yesterday as you said like and it's that mentality and i love it and and it's just because if you didn't quite get there that day like you know you, okay you can be hard on yourself but you just go and you pick yourself up and you go but you know it's not you're not being affected outside of your bubble it's just like you know keep on keep on building yourself and it's you know self build is is you know you can't put a price on it in comparison like you you might please somebody for five minutes, but you know, if you if you can grow yourself, that you know that will outshine all of that, wouldn't it? Ten, well, you know, it, it, you you it unintentionally you unintentionally create a, a, a legacy, which I think is what happens in when you when you are concentrating on yourself and, and you're not being selfish and ego, but you're you're just trying to be the best person possible in in all aspects being a musician you know being caring being kind and all of that yeah. and you just end up leaving a legacy and you instead of trying like oh i've got to affect and all these people you don't have to do that now it's 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 happening it's 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 being done and that you know and i learned that when i started reaching out to the musicians and talking to other musicians and communicating with that and them you know just giving myself like oh well so I don't, I don't have to like go make a plan to go be this type of musician and go over here and help this person, you know, try to be um, what I would call the uh, the, the superstar um, musician on the outside, and I'm kind of yeah. dying on the inside. They're like, they're like, no, they're like, if you're just trying to be the best person to be, he's like, you become a magnet, and you don't have to, you don't have to work hard. You will attract what you should attract, and usually it's good stuff. He's like, so he's like, you know. A number is like, yeah, don't do that. That's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, and, you know, and that's, I mean, honestly, you, you know, you and Claire, I mean, you, you were, you have a legacy already. You have, you've created this international legacy. It's amazing. I mean, you're helping, um, Linnell, um, you've worked, uh, I had a wonderful, I still have our photo, by the way, it's like on my oh. shelf right in front of me. Oh, <laughs> um, Westchester University with Gloria Galante. I mean, you guys, uh, you just are traveling all over the world. Just and it's mostly because you're just, you're just trying to be the best person you were, yesterday, and just yeah. keep, getting, keep getting better. And it's, now you have this international legacy. That's you know, and people love you as they should. Oh, um, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're, we're we're just you know we we just have a great time. We're we're really blessed. We just we meet lovely people like yourselves we had such a great time when we came to uh westchester it was um it was great funny enough our, our little our daughter she was she still plays with the um you guys got a like a teddy a rant oh God, God. yeah um so and she still like she she wanders around with that so um so that's cool so every time i see that i think you know we think of you guys and stuff and uh but it, it's great as you said it, it works both ways you know you turn up for places and people you know, just because of, you know, maybe what we've done or, you know, we come in and people are a little bit like, oh, whoa, like, you know, and just like, listen, same as you, I'm done the same things as you. Let's just all have fun and make music together and let's have a good time. And I think if you can just always keep that attitude that um, keeps you grounded. It's a very, it's funny, it's a very Welsh thing. Like we're, we're very, like Welsh people are, you know, we're very much about people and including people. Um, so I think that just comes across wherever we go in the world. And if you meet another Welsh person around the world, it's like, whoa, it's crazy. Like, you know, like, but, but, um, but uh, we, we love coming to the States. We can't wait to, to come back after this. There's lots of, lots of plans. So, um, so, so yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure everyone's just chomping the bit waiting for you guys. And I know now I can't wait to have you guys back at least non-virtually, but 
Yeah, and I the Welsh. I mean, you guys were fantastic representatives of of the Welsh thing. I I was like talking to Gloria. I said they are the just the most nicest. And I can't even say nice. I feel like nice was kind of almost like a, it wasn't enough, but it was just <laughs> down to earth and warm, um, approachable. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, you got, you know, one thing that I just loved was it seemed like every, every time you turned your head, it was all about building confidence. You, you were, it was all about, listen, you can do this. Um, we're going to help you do this. Don't discount, don't discount yourself. Don't negate yeah. yourself. I was just like, Oh, I was like, this is just lovely. <laughs> but is, isn't it? Isn't it almost a shame though, as well, that we 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 identify with that as something that's unusual? You know, really, know. like that every rehearsal room was had had that positive vibe, or you know, like every concert we'd go to. And but you know, those of us who are doing it from the front, you know, we can we can lead, we can inspire people to do it. So, and that's you're you're doing it in bundles with your with everything you're doing. So. I'm trying, I'm trying really. <laughs> it's just, working, it's working, keep going. Thank you. <laughs> I don't have any plans to stop from doing it. I've teamed up with some other people I'm, I'm, and I'm excited. And it's just, I have a little notebook by my bed and you know, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I can go back to sleep because it's just, something hits me and I'm like, you know, and mostly it's just cause I, I want everyone to feel as good as I feel and see what I see, understand what I understand. And I also want everyone to understand that they don't have to go through what I, what I went through to get where I, where I am, yeah. you know, yeah. it was a pretty dark place. And I was, I, I was there for a little longer than I would have liked to be there, but, um, and it did have a very negative effect on my music career. I had, I had, I had to climb, do a little bit of climbing back on something. So it's just, you know, I'm like, and I realized I was like, oh my God, I didn't even have to go through that. It made me better. And here I am, I'm, I'm taking yeah. it and I'm, you know, I learned from it, but yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing how, if you just, you know, and that's, that'll be my catchphrase. I have, um, two things that I have up, uh, uh, on my screensaver. And one of them is, um, just be, uh, you know, I see it every day. I should know this, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> just be the, um, be, just be better than you were yesterday. And uh, comparison is the death of creativity. And, you know, because we, 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 it's such a habit here for us to do that, you know, yeah. so, and we compare and we think, oh, well, should, and it's just, it's just, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a hard habit to break, but it's, it, it's breakable. Yeah. But all right. Um, I am, oh, I don't want to let you go, Chris. Like you're, I know you're just like a wealth of information. Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's so easy to talk to, but, um, I do want to say, uh, you know, thank you for coming on to my broadcast. Thank you for talking. Thank you for sharing um, a glimpse of yourself here and all the way from the UK. <laughs> and I look forward to talking to your lovely wife, Claire Jones. And um, oh, Linnell, Linnell is going to be a guest as well. So um, I'm very privileged. She's Great. amazing. <laughs> yeah, that woman, like, I thought I work hard. Like, and it, I, I go and spend some time with Linnell and I feel lazy. <laughs> I, ha she's, um, the crazy thing, I have only talked to her via email. I do, I, I do, uh, financially support Green Spring and, you know, but I just, her inner circle of just people, I, I'm like, I, I'm sweating by the time they tell me everything that she's done. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like really? You know, so, but, um, it, it's amazing, but thank you again. Uh, oh. Stay well, stay safe, stay happy. And I want to thank you everyone for watching uh, my broadcast. If you want to find out more information, go to thehappymusician.com and you will actually see and hear Chris Marshall's music and his compositions. I will have links to everything and just stay happy. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.